Today we're showing you how we installed this Danby 3-in-1 portable air conditioner and we're letting you know what we think of it. Stick with us. Welcome to the Handyverse where we turn to DIY as a first resort, usually. Sometimes we need to buy some things. Uh, today we're putting in a Danby 3-in-1 air conditioner. Uh, the reason we got this, we're about three years away from putting in a heat pump system. Uh, so, and we have the little guy here now and it's uh our bedrooms are up in the attic portion of the house so it gets really warm here so we needed to get something in fast we're going to put it in put it in this window behind me and uh it's uh what we're putting in is this danby it's a dpa 140 b8 bdb whatever that means whatever i'll put a link down below in the description for you uh, but we'll give you our thoughts on it and uh, there is going to be some DIY in this because uh, if you look at the instructions on the top here um, it calls for uh, you know uh, almost a 29 inch width window and the window I'm putting it in behind me is only 27 so I'm cutting something before this is uh, done. One thing to note on an air conditioner is that you want to make sure that it's, uh, it has enough BTUs to uh, cool down the room that you're using it in. Uh, we want this to cool the whole upper floor here, which is about 350 square feet. This is uh, supposedly good up to 700, so it should be should have plenty of juice to keep it cool up here. And uh, I'm lucky as well because in behind, we do have an outlet ready, so there's no wiring involved with this. I just got to make sure that I can fit the outlet into the window. So here's what came in the box. Obviously there's the unit itself with a standard 120 volt uh, plug adapter. Um, user manual, quick start guide, the hose. Uh, this adapter is for the back of the unit itself. This adapter goes into these pieces, which you install into the window. Uh, some foam to put around the edges of these uh, when you do install it. A drain hose in case you want to set it up to automatically drain instead of having to manually drain it yourself. Remote and this, I didn't know what this was at first, but turns out it's a uh, thing that snaps in the back that you can wrap the power cord around when you're not using it. And it comes with a uh, security tab here uh, just to, because once you have this in your window, somebody could open it from the outside. We're not worried about it here. We are on the second floor, and uh, that's not a problem here. But if you're if you're on a first floor, that's something you want to install to make sure that nobody breaks into your house. And I don't know what these are for. Two foam strips for something. As for the part I thought I was going to have to cut, it's this here. It is too long. And it says right in the manual that you can cut it this size. So I don't know why on the outside of the box it tells you that you need a minimum width on your window. That is untrue. It's, well, it's true, but it's probably only maybe 18 inches, I would say. Not the 29 that they list on the box. Okay, I'm gonna use this as a test piece to cut. Uh, I'll try a couple of different saws on it. Just so people know for themselves. This is the extra piece. I'm not going to need it, so uh, hence using it for a trial cut. Okay, can we clamp it down? Okay, did the job, uh, but I'm going to try another saw. Might be something that can do it a little cleaner. That was definitely cleaner. Uh, I'm gonna go with a hacksaw. But if, if you only have like a, a, a regular handsaw, that'll do the job. But hacksaw's a little cleaner. And you can see here, I'm only taking about five eighths of an inch off it, but I need to in order to get it to fit in the window. So here we go. All right, we're good to go put it up in the window.
Okay, a little bit more DIY. I need a spacer because when I went to put this in the window, it hits the uh, the trim around the edge. So I uh, cut a couple of sticks to the right length and I wrapped it all around with the uh, foam that came with it, the weather strip foam. And I get it, it's not an ideal fix, but um, until we get new windows in, uh, this will this will do the job. But uh, I'm gonna put that spacer in now, then I can put this piece in and uh, all I got to do then is connect the hose to the air conditioner unit and uh, we should be good to go. The cat checked it out and it looks like the spacer is going to work. So I got that down in there. I got the foam on the sides. I just need to put the foam across the bottom of here and then I can place the uh, this piece in and close it up. And you can see here why these windows need to be replaced, but that's a project for next year. All right, the window section is in place. Just have to connect the hose. So on the back, this here just slides down from the top. I guess that's it. I didn't hear a click or anything, but it seems to be connected. So once you have all that in, the last thing you need to do is make sure that you put the foam, that uh, the extra thick foam that comes with it, put that in here to prevent the air from coming back in or insects or whatever crawling inside the space that this creates. So I got this hooked up and we ran it overnight last night. Um, some thoughts on it, uh, some of the features. It has a timer, it has an oscillating fan. Uh, it can do multiple cycles, dehumidifying, cooling, regular fan, uh, things like that, pretty standard. Um, what I will say is that it is pretty loud and uh, that's probably an artifact of it being a, a large uh, a large BTU air conditioner uh, and we probably oversized it for this space. Um, lesson learned there, but it is just a temporary solution. So eventually down the road, we'll add a heat pump and we'll be we'll be better, better off that way. But um, it did a nice job cooling the room that's for sure. So if you have a large area uh, that you're trying to cool down, I think this is a good option for you, but I wouldn't recommend it for a bedroom. To give you an idea of what it sounds like in terms of levels, I'll turn it on here now. Turn it down into cooling mode and uh, I'll try not to adjust the sound here and you'll see what it's like when it kicks in. You can see it opens from the top, that's where the air comes out and then this flap will move up and down to spread the air around the room. So that gives you an idea of what it sounds like when it's in cooling mode. And if I turn the temperature up to uh, maintenance mode, you'll get an idea here of what it sounds like just when it's in maintenance mode. Maybe in a second. And this is the volume it runs at when it's in maintenance mode once it gets to temperature. So it's a lot better then, but still quite loud when it is trying to cool. It's supposed to have silencer technology. Eh, not sure how well that works, but uh, more marketing than anything else. But that's our thoughts on this uh, air conditioner. If you like this, hit like. If you want to see what else we do, hit subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video.